joining David for sports this morning. And one of the Spurs' best players will miss the preseason ahead of the regular season in October. Man, that's some bad news, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just hadn't even started. You hate season. to hear it. The team says fourth year forward Keldon Johnson suffered a dislocated shoulder during an open gym session. Right now, the team says he's actively rehabbing and he's going to miss the entire preseason, but he is expected to start the regular season, which tips off Wednesday, October 19th at the AT&T Center against the Charlotte Hornets. The Spurs will have another update for us tomorrow on Media Day. All right, I watched this game on the gridiron. The wow. UTSA Roadrunners got off to a slow start against Texas Southern in the Alamo Dome yesterday. They had a strong second half, though, able to put the Tigers away for good. Roadrunners made some noise early with their first kickoff return in school history. They went up 14-7. to It was close at half with the runners leading 21-17. Quarterback Frank Harris helped the team pull away in the second half, passing for a single-game school record of 392 yards, four touchdown passes. UTSA won it 52-24, racking up 553 yards of offense. We came out there second half, played a lot more clean. You just got to just calm down and just keep playing football. Everything take care of itself. I think we were trying to thinking a little too much. Um, that's why we're having a lot of self-inflicted wounds. And I think the second half definitely came out there a lot more relaxed and just play football. So looking ahead, UTSA is on the road next weekend, taking on Middle Tennessee, who just upset a ranked Miami Hurricane team. Talk about a big win for a team. That was huge yesterday. And I'm pretty surprised you even showed up to work this morning. Ooh. After all the partying you probably did, David Sears. So wrapping up a crazy college football weekend was a Texas Longhorns and David Sears, Lubbock, yeah. on the Texas Tech. I was very calm all afternoon. <laughs> Going to the game, Texas ranked 22nd in the nation. Backup Hudson Card getting the start at quarterback. Touchdown run. B.J. Johnson put the burnouts up 31-17. You saw that. Tech came back. Donovan Smith to Baylor Cup. That was tied the game at 31. Both of them added field goals, so we go to overtime. In overtime, B.J. Robinson fumbled. Tech recovered, and there's your winning kickoff. Watch the goalpost come down real fast. Watch this. Yep. You notice the goalposts now are on little levers and they like take the 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 padding off the goalposts and then they crank them down so these kids can't get on them. Oh, but really? but yeah, it's it's like a hinge and it kind of Smart know, it idea. Down. But you know, just like they did back in 2008 when Tech beat Texas, the crowd rushes the field, you know. I mean, you don't get to beat Texas every now and again. But look at that. 37-34. Wow. wow. Were so. you expecting that to happen? Uh, I was hoping it would happen. Well, of course. Uh, it's kind of but... like, you know, Texas has got that, that running game. And, you know, but Tech defense stepped up. We're going to hear from Joey McGuire, head coach of Texas Tech right now. I told you they were going to break, and they did. I told you they were going to break, and did. The reporter asked me at the end, says, what's it mean to win this game and beat Texas? I said, it doesn't mean anything to beat Texas. We're 1-0 in the Big 12. Yeah. That's what it means. The country's going to find out. Everything runs through Lubbock. Oh, is he fired up or what? Fired up. Doesn't mean anything to beat Texas. We're 1-0 in the Big 12, baby. Like that. Just another game. And just a, wow. I just realized you're, that's why you're wearing your red this morning. Well, you know, red and black. Representing. Yep. And then AM yeah. beat Arkansas. Yeah. Which they is a big back. win for them. They did you, did you see that game last night? <laughs> I didn't I didn't watch the AM game. I was watching the the Arkansas quarterback tried to dive over the line. Yeah. He fumbled the ball. Hopefully we can get this later. But he fumbled the ball. AM recovered, and the the guy that recovered the ball is getting tackled. He hands off to another guy, really? another Aggie, and he's gone. <laughs> it was one of the most amazing plays you have ever seen. So maybe we can get that one for us at the, at the 8 o'clock show. A lot but of great games. I was, was just uh, nuts. The rivalry Tennessee Florida a little bit yesterday. Yeah. That was a heck of a game, too. There was a lot. College football was, College football was, was a good weekend. wild yeah. yesterday. Yeah. That's, that's always fun. And then what's the big game today? It's uh, Green Bay and Tampa Bay? Green Bay and Tampa Bay today, and then the Cowboys tomorrow night. With um, two big quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers. And, uh, oh, yeah. Guy What's Brady? the guy's name? Going ahead something Brady. Something. Uh, I think it's Tom. Tom. Okay. Tom the goat. Yeah. I'll so go that'd be a big it. game today. <laughs> so, yeah. Might be a nice day to, to kind of hang out inside just because it's got a little bit more humidity. I was outside doing some work yesterday, and it was fairly humid out mm. there. So you're going to want to, uh, you're going to be dealing with that. But that's all going to be changing by, well, right around this time tomorrow. 76 right now. That bottom number is up to 71, the dew point. So, yeah, there's a 
more moisture in the air than what we had uh, just going back a couple of days ago, just going back to yesterday morning at this time. 94 for a high temperature. The normal average is 88. So just to put it in perspective, we're definitely on the warm side. The aquifer went up two tenths of a foot yesterday, and the allergens just have three of them out there. Mold, pigweed, as well as ragweed. All right, if you are going to be heading outside and uh, taking someone, oh, darn it all, there's my, there's my good old, well, the Wi-Fi in here. That dog's got a good pace, though, yeah. I noticed. Yeah. Got a good pace. Skip the little <laughs> blank page right here. Anyway, scan that QR code, and uh, then you can easily download uh, KSAT Connect pictures of your pets, of the weather, and Wi-Fi to work will show cute little pictures there. So anyway, as far as the uh, forecast today, we're starting off with some clouds out there. 76 here in town, upper 60s in the Hill Country. Think back to last week, even uh, Thursday, Friday mornings, we were down in the upper 60s here in town, upper 60s, right around 70, and even low 60s in parts of the Hill Country. So it has definitely gotten warmer than what it was just a few days ago. And these numbers, again, dew points are up uh, four, five, six, seven, eight degrees compared to this time yesterday morning. So much more humidity out there. Got a couple of showers showing up along the, the coastal plain and just sort of zooming on in. Some of these will uh, kind of pretty much hang out there. One or two are going to be making it further inland today, like was the case yesterday. We had just a couple of those pop up showers here and there. We'll bottom out at 74 this morning and then warm up fairly quickly. Uh, more sunshine this morning and then a few more clouds popping in here this afternoon. 88, so already at the normal high at noon. And then we'll top off, like I said, at 94. And here's that 20% chance for one or two of those showers or a uh, eh, maybe a thunderstorm. I kind of doubt that, but there'll just be a couple of them out there later on this afternoon. And this is the most aggressive computer model. Others aren't this bullish as far as rain, so it's 20% at best. And again, they'll count them on one hand basically. This model also as we go into the overnight hours wants to scare up a few showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms, primarily in the hill country in the early morning hours as that front is approaching. And again, this is the only one that really wants to do that. Uh, can't completely discount it as far as early tomorrow morning. Then with this northerly flow, that's going to start to pull in that drier air. And this is what it looks like. Dew points are fairly high this morning. They drop down somewhat this this afternoon. Um, I think this one kind of pushes it a little bit as far as getting into the 50s. We'll still have some humidity hanging around here. We go through the 24 hour cycle tomorrow morning, but then here comes that drier air in behind that front, and that's going to make for some really, really comfortable air, not only tomorrow afternoon, but then pretty much the rest of the week. 88 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today makes it up to 94, a stray shower or two, just one or two of them. I'm going to just put the mention in there of a stray morning shower, primarily off to the west. The front's going to move through about 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. The time we'll put it on as of right now. And whoops, let me go back here. Darn it all, I jumped ahead. See, I got anxious talking about this front. And I uh, kind of jumped ahead too much as far as going up to the... Uh, going past the seven day forecast. You know what? It's just not, it's a Sunday morning for me. And <laughs> so what's happening Mike, right I, now? I'm, I'm happy you're here. Thank you. Low 60s for low temperatures next week. Highs though in the low 90s. So we'll still be on the warm side, but low humidity. Like Thank that. you. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. All right, 617, 75 degrees. Still coming up, it is no secret that San Antonio is the taco capital of Texas and the world for them. And now it's getting national recognition We'll talk about it. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. Uh, did he really write that? <laughs> he did. You got to say it proud. All right. Up next, talk a man that's it. gone from homelessness to a Ph.D. program says it's still really hard for him to find a job. We'll look at why. We're gonna it has been a volatile week on Wall Street following the fifth interest rate hike from the Federal Reserve. As investors and economists concerned about a global recession, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates for the fifth time this year last week in an effort to curb ongoing inflation. In August, Americans paid 8.3% more for goods compared to a year ago. The Fed's hope by making it more expensive to borrow money, demands for goods and services will drop, which would slow inflation. For now, the rate at a 30-year mortgage is double what it was in January. The average interest rate on credit cards stands at about 18%. On the positive side of things, the North Carolina man celebrating after being 
drug after beating drug addiction and homelessness to earn three college degrees. So Michael Watkins is now working on his fourth degree. He's been accepted into a doctoral program where he is studying health care administration. Watkins says he was a drug addict who lived on the streets and in shelters in Raleigh for 20 years. But thanks to people who believed in him, Watkins went clean and went back to school in 2015 since he has earned an associate's a bachelor's and a master's degree. However, Watkins admits he still struggles to find work because of his past mistakes. I had a 15 year crack habit and I got clean. And, and once I started that, it was full steam ahead. No one wants to forgive me for what criminal acts I committed 34 years ago. Well, despite the struggles, Watkins says he gives back by serving as a Red Cross emergency response volunteer in disaster zones like in Alabama and Louisiana post-Katrina, in Texas during the 2016 flood, and Oregon's 2020 wildflower, wildfires. Good for him. Hopefully he'll find something. Three degrees, really? On the fourth? And working on his fourth? Making us look lazy. <laughs> 622, 75 degrees. All right, up next, we're talking we tacos. We're going to taco about it, like David said. How San Antonio's rise to fame as a major city for tacos is gaining national attention. Welcome back. It is 20 minutes, 26 minutes after 6 o'clock. It's Sunday. <laughs> this is, He's still yeah. celebrating after that text. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> we all know San Antonio reigns supreme on tacos. Get that? Supreme taco. Yep. But now a new study says it's one of top taco places in the entire country. That's right. So whether you're a San Antonio native or you're just visiting the Alamo City, it's a prime spot for all things tacos at not just for breakfast, all times of the day. So in a study by Clever Real Estate, San Antonio placed third. Wait, really just third? Third? In the nation overall for tacos, San Jose, San Jose California no. took second. No, no. okay. Now, oh, now I'm just upset. Ah. Come on. No. No, no, okay. And for some weird reason, Austin claimed, oh, no. No, that's even worse than San Jose. <laughs> I don't even want to finish on. reading this. Okay, so Austin claimed the top spot. San Antonio also earned a top spot for Bidia Tacos and Quesadillas. Dallas and Houston placed in the top 15 overall. Now I'm upset because <laughs> it becomes, remember the taco war between uh -huh. Austin and, yeah. why is Austin saying they're worried? Uh, no! They, they Austin, Austin doesn't know wishes. what a good taco no. is. Because the publishers of the magazine probably live The there. public, uh, there you go, Michael. Well, the people, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, no. Uh, no. Money, money no. talks, right? No, not believing that one. No. No. Hey, San Antonio, we know we're number one. We're not number three, we're number one. Oh. 627, 75 degrees, no way. No way. No way. Just. All right. <laughs> Still to come at GMSA at 630, November's election day. Coming up fast, how local organizations are getting people ready to vote before it's too late. And a world famous ballet school visits Uvalde to teach dance and promote love and healing. You don't want to miss that one. Coming up. And good morning. It is 630. It is Sunday, September 25th. Good morning. Love having David Sears here and Mike Osterhage on our Sunday show. This, this is a great morning, isn't it? It's a good morning. Because we're up. You know, I'm still thinking about the tacos that we were talking okay, about. Okay, continue, uh, please. Yeah. But when you think about it, I mean, uh, almost a perfect food because think of all the different food groups you can put in it. Eggs, cheese, there beans, vegetables, meat, if you or, don't want yeah. meat. Yeah. All that, I mean, it all covers everything. All in a, in a warm, yeah. doughy flour tortilla. Yeah. I don't, corn, I'm almost a corn, corn I'm, I'm a that. corn girl too. Yeah. yeah. So if you're just waking up, Apparently, San Antonio is third in the country in and great tacos San behind San Jose and Austin. San Jose is number two, Austin. and Austin is one. We were talking about that earlier. We're mad. Yeah. Now we're yeah. mad. Uh, so, yeah. Go down and go buy You can have tacos. dessert tacos if you want. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't Everything. Know. So. I don't wear Dinner them. tacos, breakfast tacos, lunch tacos. <laughs> I want to know who they, uh, who they asked about the tacos. Uh, someone, obviously, in Austin. <laughs> Not here. No. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Had a little trouble with Wi-Fi now. First, here's, mm -hmm. we're going to start off with that little picture there of this little guy waiting for fall, uh, or it says, happy fall, welcome to fall, but which was, of course, last Thursday. It will start to come in. It's not going to be the huge fall front that we always look forward to, but this is going to be significant enough, especially given the fact we've, you know, it's been so hot and humid all summer long and it will get rid of the humidity. Scan that QR code if you want to uh, download a, a KSAT Connect picture of... Uh,
your pup and or some great weather pictures. We've got some clouds hanging around here right now, and there are a couple of showers down here along the, the coastal plain. Not much. I mean, it's almost like almost nothing onshore, but there will be uh, this flow coming in here off the Gulf, a little disturbance around, and so we may have one or two of those stray showers like we had around here yesterday afternoon. Very few and far between 75 degrees. The average normal low temperature is in the 60s, so we're a good seven, eight degrees above normal. Uh, just a couple of 60s in portions of the hill country. Mold, ragweed and pigweed are all on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning, partly cloudy. I'll call it pleasant. I mean, it's not quite as low humidity as what we had around here yesterday, but uh, it's not like it's in your face sort of humidity. Partly cloudy, a couple of showers, mid 90s later on today, above normal. Then that front's going to move through right about this time tomorrow morning. We'll start to see it coming through the uh, hill country. Humidity is going to be dropping down throughout the day. It is going to be somewhat on the breezy side. Winds out of the north to northeast about 10, 20 miles per hour. And then after that, we're going to have some cool mornings, sunny but warm on the warm side afternoons. How cool are we going to be getting? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Cyclovia is a chance to get out and play and take advantage of some empty streets. So if you'd like to follow the September 2022 route, here's what you can expect. You can begin at West Ashby Place and North Main Avenue and continue on to Lexington Avenue. Take a left there at Augusta Street and even turn right at Brooklyn Avenue and finish off at North Alamo Street. But of course, while there will be some closures out there, of course, traffic will also be able to make their way on through there. Here are the streets that will be open to cross traffic. Jones Avenue and North Alamo Street, Avenue B and Brooklyn Avenue, Augusta Street and McC Hella Avenue, East Elmira Street, and Lexington Avenue. But if you'd like a full list of what you can expect out there, grab those phones right now, scan the QR code that is popping up on your screen. That will take you directly to our KSAT traffic page. And there it is. It has a full list of the closures taking place in and around the city. And of course, any special events were that could impact traffic. And speaking of Ciclovia, I'm going to be out there all morning. There's a couple of new things this year. For starters, the route is new. It actually goes through three downtown parks, Madison Square Park, Crockett Park, and Maverick Park. Organizers say the cha they changed the route to introduce people to new areas of town and new businesses. Local vendors will be set up. Free exercise classes will be happening. And since there will be lots of open space, bring your bike hoverboard. I know I'll be bringing my roller skates and this year organizers are hopeful for a bigger turnout. Before the pandemic, nearly 75,000 people showed up and since last year attendance has dropped to 20,000 people. So we'll see how those numbers look this morning. Now keep in mind roads will be blocked off starting at 8 and you can head downtown starting at 10. It'll go on until 2 this afternoon and coming up later on, later this morning on GMSA at 8. I'll be there live. We'll be talking with organizers about how Ciclovia can be beneficial to our mental health. So be sure to keep it right here. David, Sarah. Hi, Camille. We'll look forward to seeing you out there later on this morning. In the meantime, 20 people are without home and some belongings after an apartment complex fire. Fire officials say eight units were damaged at the comp at the complex on the city's west side. Flames broke out around noon on Saturday on Cable Ranch Road near ba Marbach and Loop 410. Crews say they saw heavy smoke and flames when they arrived. The fire was reportedly in between the walls of the second and third floors before spreading to the attic. No injuries were reported. Yeah, I talked to some of my neighbors on the other top floors. They said uh, nothing bad happened to their apartment either. All they had is a hole in the, in the restroom. They all had the same problem as me, just, just a hole in the restroom. And a little bit of smoke that got in their apartment. Fire crews said the fire happened on the right day at the right time for everyone to make it out safely. Those displaced will work with the Red Cross and apartment complex management to find temporary housing. This weekend marks four months since that tragedy at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, and the community has been steeped in sadness ever since. But there were moments of joy at the El Progreso Library as the world-renowned Joffrey School of Ballet came to teach dance and promote love and healing. Our Lee Waldman tells us more on what happened. The baby grand piano's ballad married with the sound of laughter. Love wins. And we came here with love. To drive out some of the sadness of this solemn anniversary. You enjoy it, but at the same time, it, the emotions, you know, still, still remain. But it's, thank you, thank you. The music, the choreography, it just, it was beautiful. So thank you.
The El Progreso Library transformed into a ballet studio so students from the Joffrey School of Ballet could help teach the children of Uvalde. I do ballet, so it was really cool to see like super advanced ballet. Joe Matos is an artistic director with the Joffrey School of Ballet. She's seen how movement can help heal a community grappling with grief. Ten years ago, I brought this book to Sandy Hook and I did this program with Sandy Hook. Um, so when this uh, atrocity happened here, it just seemed like the logical thing. The dancers came from three states. Yesterday, they visited several schools teaching similar classes. Dancer Jimmy Long says it's an experience he'll never forget. I know that everyone's like really broken from what happened, but just to see, as she said, like their resilience uh, from the event and how they've really like kept it positive and like have turned the negative situation and tried to like unite as a community. It's like really inspiring. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Well, the ballet also visited the three Uvalde Elementary Schools on Friday. They believe they danced with about 600 children and hope the joy and support they brought can help some of those children get through these hard times ahead. Lingy, hey, we are just 44 days away from Election Day, and organizations everywhere are pushing people to get registered to vote. The deadline to register is October 11th. One of those groups is the NAACP San Antonio branch. They lead a multi-organizational effort to sign up new voters on Saturdays. The political action chair tells us they're putting an emphasis on getting more women registered. We want to register people to vote. We want to educate voters, and more than anything, we want to get people to the people to the poll. Well, so far, we are seeing more female first-time voters. Now, according to records from the Bear County Elections Department, from March 1st to September 23rd, right now, there's over 48,000 newly registered voters, including more than 24,000 of them are women. 13,000 newly registered voters are in the age group of 18 to 20 years old. It is now 639 and 74 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a new firefighter calendar is coming out and it's getting attention for some unlikely reasons. That story coming up. And a new storm in the Caribbean could end up nailing Florida. How the state is preparing coming up after the break. Different story over here at 640, 74 degrees. Yes, we are going to have a quote unquote cool front, but what does that really mean? Michael, let us know when we come back. This morning, Florida is under a state of emergency as the state braces for the ninth named storm of the 2022 hurricane season, season, season and that is Ian. This comes after cleanup gets going in eastern Canada after Hurricane Fiona made landfall Saturday. Here's ABC's Morgan Norwood with the latest from Florida. We're out of water, folks. No water. This morning, the state of Florida under a state of emergency. Residents scrambling to prepare as Tropical Storm Ian takes aim. Oh, it's uh, tumultuous to say the least. It makes it hard for the people that just want to get their regular items. Ian rapidly intensifying, upgraded to a tropical storm, and now the ninth named system of the season. It's expected to reach hurricane status by tonight. There's the potential for widespread uh, hazardous impacts across all the all of Florida, essentially. NASA already making the decision to scrub Tuesday's planned launch of its Artemis One mission. We could find out today whether crews will take the rocket back to the hangar. It had been a relatively quiet hurricane season. But Ian comes right on the heels of Hurricane Fiona, which made landfall in Puerto Rico nearly a week ago wiping out power to hundreds of thousands of people, then leaving a path of destruction in Bermuda before slamming into eastern Canada, knocking out power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses. An incredible amount of trees down, and not just power lines uh, across the roads. Uh, in, in many cases, entire power poles down, snapped in half. I know this is uh, common across the province right now. The cleanup just now beginning. And our government is standing ready to support provinces with any necessary resources. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Orlando. You know, one of the concerns I have in Florida is there's so many new residents that have moved in that maybe not are used to like these hurricanes that they're having to tell them tell, tell those new folks hey this is what's coming and this is how you need to prepare yeah and looking at the latest uh, forecast from national hurricane center it is going to strengthen and gain a lot of strength and probably be uh it's going to get up to category three and or, or stronger than that which is considered a major hurricane whether it loses any of that strength 
once it makes landfall, that's still a little beyond the, the forecast cone, but I'm going to show you that in a second. First of all, uh, step outside this morning and or excuse me, tomorrow morning, I should say, just look ahead and it's going to be 74 degrees. Wind's going to start to shift around out of the northeast and then that's when the front moves on through here. The humidity, which we'll still have some tomorrow morning, maybe a shower in the hill country, but the humidity is going to be dropping down throughout the day and it is going to be on the breezy side. It's going to be a lot more comfortable tomorrow afternoon. Still kind of warm, however. All right, if it's warm out there, Aww. stick your tongue out. So is, I want to know, is the dog posing like a lot of people do for selfies with tongue sticking out, or is it, <laughs> is it just sticking its tongue out just to be just because it looks like a fox. I know it kind of does right? and the eyes kind of going. Yee. So Ooh. anyway, uh, <laughs> scan that QR code and you can uh, download your KSAC Connect pictures. Well, hot day today, 94 for high temperature, maybe a shower or two, kind of like what we had around here yesterday. Few clouds, just a couple of them. You can see the sun is starting to come up. There's one or two of those showers there along the coastal plain. So we do have this flow still coming in here off the Gulf. And so uh, that's what computer models are indicating. Again, a couple of showers around there maybe as we go on through the afternoon, early evening hours. What's interesting, though, is this particular model wants to actually scare up a couple of showers, and this is one of the only ones that does this. Uh, looking at a few others, they don't have anything as the front works its way down in here in the, the wee hours tomorrow morning through portions of the hill country. So I'm not going to completely discount this, but uh, just kind of qualified a little bit. Small chance for some rain tomorrow. All right, as far as the 12-hour uh, forecast, we're going to have partly cloudy skies around here. Make it up through the mid-upper 80s already the normal high at noon and then 94 high temperature today. Yeah, it is going to be hot somewhat on the humid side, 20% chance for showers and um, that'll be about it. Just one or two of them out there. Humidity will drop down somewhat later on this afternoon. I think 59 may be pushing things here. We'll still stay in about the low 60s like we were yesterday. And then tomorrow morning, there's the front moving on through here, and that brings in that much, much drier air. So that's what's going to be really, really comfortable. So here is what is now Ian, Tropical Storm Ian, 65 mile per hour, excuse me, sustained winds at 50 miles per hour, has to make it up to 74 to become a hurricane, which is going to be happening quite quickly and it's going to gain strength quickly there in the Western Caribbean, working its way into the Gulf of Mexico then and also becoming a category four storm weakened a little bit. And then the question being, does it stay at category three strength as it makes landfall somewhere right there, almost along the panhandle from Panama City over somewhere in between that and Tampa. So that's definitely uh, something that is going to be a concern then. Then that's going to work its way up into probably the Tennessee Valley Valley and the Atlantic seaboard and be a huge rain producer for them. So the forecast for us, boy, we could use some rain, but that's not really in the forecast other than a stray shower or two, but not anything significant. 88 at noon and then high temperature up to 94 stray shower or two this afternoon. As that front moves through tomorrow morning, again, maybe a couple of showers in the hill country, just a just a mention of it. And then we're going to be up in the low 90s all the way through the rest of the week. So it's still going to be about three, four degrees above normal or perhaps a little bit more low temperatures, though. That's going to be the significant thing down in the low 60s, which will be really, really nice and low humidity. Light, light sweater in the morning, but by like what, 10? It's oh, yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. But it'll be really comfortable in the afternoons with if you're in the shade, be yeah, fantastic. Like you can do and, an evening walk. And then, yeah, and then cool off kind of quickly in the evenings, too. Oh. I love that. Thank you, Mike. Yep. It is fall after all. Right. Come on, fall. Good point. <laughs> 649, 74 degrees. All right. Up next on GMSA, a firefighter calendar making headlines for more than one reason. Oh, wow. Those are some jorts we're looking at on the screen. <laughs> Nothing to do with the looks. We'll explain next. And outside of a trans guide, it is Sunday morning. It is 650, so there's not a whole a lot of traffic out there. But if you headed out there, be careful. Please do. All right, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three. Three, 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 four. I can't unsee the firefighter thing. I know. That's a, that's one way to wake up on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Daily four, six, three, nine, seven, fireball four. Cash five is 13, 17, 20, 21, and 27. And Lotto Texas is three, 17, 18, 19, 40, 49. And Powerball. Three, nine, 21, 24, 29, Powerball is 14. Power play is two. Good luck.
It has been a turbulent year for the airline industry, but one worldwide carrier stood out from the rest. Qatar Airways has been selected as the world's best airline for 2022. That outcome was based on 14 million customer surveys performed by the UK-based SkyTracks website. The Qatari-based airline has won top honors seven times since the award was introduced back in 1999. Delta took the top spot among U.S.-based air carriers, and Turkish Airlines was named the best in Europe. A volunteer fire department in Kentucky has opened some steamy photos. will raise money for equipment and other aspects of their operation. All right, so these pictures taken for the department's annual calendar are going viral before it comes out in just a few weeks. Take a look at your screen. The brave, the department's brave men and women revealed a bit of their personalities between the fire gear. One guy cuddled a puppy. Oh my God, the jorts guy, there he is. Another guy got creative with a razor. The photos make for a good laugh, but of course it was for a good cause. All of the money raised goes back to the department to help with life-saving efforts. We can use the money, that's for sure, because when you start buying equipment, people do not realize how, much, how expensive the equipment that we have to buy is. So the calendar is so important, even the chief had to step in front of the camera, but he says you'll have to buy the calendar to get a glimpse <laughs> of his photos. Hey, give him credit for putting it all out there. Yeah, that's great. That's good stuff. Real Puppy, man. there it is. Real men. <laughs> and women. Jean, never heard jean shorts called jorts. Oh, yeah, they're called jorts. Yeah. Since when? Come on, Mike. Jorts. You never heard of jorts? Nope. Have you heard of jorts? I've heard of jorts. Yeah, see, even, even David Sears has heard of jorts, Mike. <laughs> 55, 74 degrees. Mike's a fashionista, though. I know. He doesn't wear <laughs> jorts. All right, here's jorts. what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, all eyes on Ian in Florida, a state of emergency. Tropical storm Ian expected to reach hurricane strength today. President Biden now authorizing relief efforts for the Sunshine State. What to expect is many race to prepare for the worst. Also coming up, the new bans enacted in Arizona against abortion and abortion providers and how Democrats are pushing back. And now six weeks ahead of the midterm elections, what our new ABC News Washington Post poll is revealing. And we're taking an in-depth look at NASA's DART mission, how the space agency is using new cutting-edge technology to take precautions in protecting our planet. What to expect from the first test tomorrow. It's all ahead here on GMA. By the way, jorts are called cutoffs. Oh, my God. Anyway, we've got some uh, <laughs> couple of clouds hanging around there right now. One Short or two weather. showers. And yes, it is cutoff weather today. <laughs> it is going to be warm and humid. 75 right now, and we'll have a high temperature today up to 94. A shower or two is possible. Later on today, we're going to count on it. And then that front's going to move through drier air. Cool mornings, warm afternoons on the warm side this week, but at least low humidity. So good cutoff weather yeah, you never wasted a pair of jeans when you were growing no, up, did you, man? Turned you them into them shorts. All. all right, Cut it off. is jort weather. Whatever you Especially for uh, Cyclovia, our Camellia Watt is going to be out there live previewing that event happening later this morning. See you back here at 8. Good morning, everyone. Got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now. One or two showers down there along the coast, and some of that energy is going to move on in here. Just a stray shower or two like we had yesterday. Very warm, somewhat humid out there this morning. We're still about 8 degrees above normal. 88 at noon, that's the normal high temperature, and then we make it up to 94 later on today. Again, a stray shower or two. That front's going to move through tomorrow morning. It'll bring in much drier air, which will then allow for some very cool mornings, but warm afternoons throughout the rest of next week. Choose kindness. Good morning, everyone. A few clouds hanging around here. Otherwise, a fairly pleasant start this morning. We have uh, mild temperatures. One or two showers are still showing up here down along the uh, right along the coast. And, you know, some of this energy, along with just kind of a weakness in the atmosphere, is going to help to touch off one or two showers later on this afternoon. Kind of like what we had yesterday, which means few and far between. Count them on one hand. That'll be about it. 75 degrees. The average normal low is in the upper 60s, so we are roughly 7, 8 degrees above normal. There is some humidity out there this morning with these dew points in the upper 60s and even some low 70s. And even though the humidity will drop down somewhat later on this afternoon, it's still going to it'll feel a lot like it did yesterday. 94, a shower or two. Then tomorrow, now there may be an overnight shower in the hill country, but that front's going to move through in the morning, about 7 o'clock this morning right around this time. Drier air is going to come in throughout the day, breezy conditions, and that drier air will allow for some cool mornings and warm afternoons throughout the rest of the week. 
And good morning, everyone. Well, we've got uh, not a bad start this morning. We've got some uh, sunshine out there as of right now and a couple of showers down there along the coast. We'll see one or two of those trying to move in here a little bit further. It is going to be warm today. We're going to make it up to nine. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A dance company visit Uvalde on the four month anniversary of the Robb Elementary shooting. What they did to spread love and healing for Uvalde CISD students. And today is Ciclovia. I know our Camelia Wada, she is going to be out there. They have some new changes and where they're actually holding the event. We'll tell you about that in just a bit as well. You can play in the street without having to worry about cars. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock on Sunday, September 25th. Good morning. How to be yeah, new voice, new face. I know we have the different voice. I know, different I, know face. He's a new, I know he's very new to our viewers. <laughs> well, David <laughs> Sears is in for Max Massey well, and okay. another very new fresh face. Mike Osterhage also in for Sarah Spivey. So we're going to have a fun show today. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so hang on to your hat. Here we go. Here we go, Mike. <laughs> Send your blessings to Acosta for the next hour. <laughs> and if you're down at uh, Ciclovia and you see a uh, young dark haired lady doing lots of tricks on roller skates, yeah. because Camelia told me that she can like do jumps and, I'm a and little, backwards I'm and stuff like that. I'm a little like nervous so. about that, not going to lie. <laughs> we'll see. Why? <laughs> Anyone on roller skates makes me nervous. Well, okay, but anyway, yeah. hey, we've got a couple of uh, just one or two clouds hanging out there uh, right now, but lots of sunshine and uh, it's going to be a beautiful day today. It is on the warm side, though, and it's going to stay on the warm side. We've got a couple of showers down here along the uh, the coast and only show those because, well, they're not doing much of anything, but we'll still have enough of kind of a weakness in the atmosphere, uh, enough of a little glitch around, if you want to call it that, that may touch off one or two showers in the vicinity later on this afternoon, kind of like what we had yesterday. There were just one or two of them out there. 76 here in town, 73 Port SA and some 60s in the hill country. And think back to even just a couple of days ago when these numbers were down here in town. It was in the upper 60s and even low 60s and upper 50s in parts of the hill country. So it is warmer. It is slightly more humid. These numbers dew points are up. You like to see them at 60 or below. And that was the case a couple of days ago, but just wait because by this time tomorrow we'll start to see drier air move in here and those dew point temperatures dropping down and the humidity dropping down. Mold, ragweed, pigweed are all on the low side and throughout the day. Yeah, 94 for high temperature. There's that 20% chance for a stray shower or two. Most of us aren't going to be seeing anything, but we are counting down. Now it's about less than 24 hours until that front starts to work its way through the area. Like I said, drier air moves in throughout the day and then low temperatures going to be really nice. Talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, David. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a man is behind bars after police say he assaulted an Ulta Beauty employee after attempting to rob the store on the far north side of town. So according to an arrest affidavit, 20 year old David Zamora went inside the store with a group of suspects wearing face masks and began grabbing items. The victim told police she confronted the suspects as they were leaving, and that's when Zamora hit her allegedly pushing her into a display case. He's facing a robbery charge. And right now, San Antonio police are searching for the suspect in an overnight shooting on the west side of town. Investigators tell us the victim showed up at his girlfriend's house around midnight after being shot three times. Officers searched for a crime scene but couldn't find one. The victim was taken to the hospital, expected to be okay. So far, no arrests have been made. Several people were hurt after an overnight crash involving multiple vehicles. It happened around 2 in the morning at Loop 410 and Jackson Keller. So right now it's unclear what caused this crash, but we do know one of the drivers rolled their vehicle on the highway. Three people were rushed to the hospital, one of them in critical condition. Officers closed down Loop 410 while the scene was being investigated, but the highway has now opened up. Yesterday marked the four month period since the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. The Joffrey School of Ballet went to Uvalde on the four month anniversary to teach dance to students in Uvalde, but more importantly, to promote love and healing. The El Progreso Library transformed into a ballet studio so the students from the ballet could help teach the children of Uvalde. The dancers came from three states. On Friday, they went to several Uvalde CISD schools to teach those dance classes. Joe Motos is a artistic director with the Joffrey School, and she's seen how movement can heal a community grappling with grief. Ten years ago, I brought this book to Sandy Hook. 
and I did this program with Sandy Hook. Um, so when this uh, atrocity happened here, it just seemed like the logical thing. Between the three schools yesterday or Friday, it appears that about 600 students were able to dance. She hopes the joy and support they brought can help the kids get through some of the hard times ahead. Well, Tropical Storm Ian, just hours away from growing to a hurricane strength in the state of Florida, is in a state of emergency. Many in Florida are already getting set for the worst. Rob Marciano has more from Tampa. This morning, Tropical Storm Ian gaining strength in the Caribbean, forecast to become a major hurricane heading toward the Gulf of Mexico and targeting the U.S. Unfortunately, we expect conditions to become a lot more favorable for the storm to intensify. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency, leaving residents scrambling for supplies. There is no time like now to prepare. Get your supplies early. You're going to see a lot of things empty out of the grocery stores fast. I know that they're limiting water. Um, we thankfully got there at 7 a.m. when they opened, so there was still, you know, some supply. Emergency management officials working around the clock to stay one step ahead of the storm. Because of all the rain, making sure the culverts are clear, making sure that there's uh, good drainage locations. As Floridians prepare for Ian, Canadians are reeling from Fiona. Torrential rain and near 100 mile per hour winds ripping off roofs, washing away homes, and knocking out power to hundreds of thousands. The Canadian Hurricane Center called Fiona a historic storm for eastern Canada, reaching a record low pressure at landfall in Nova Scotia. Our thoughts go out to our friends in Atlanta, Canada and Puerto Rico. Still a very tough road ahead after Fiona came through there. All right, very anxious times here in Tampa. This is a major U.S. city that is very vulnerable to hurricanes. You see all the water here, very vulnerable to storm surge, which means that even if Ian passes to the west, this city will flood or worse. Rob Marciano, ABC News, Tampa. Well, today is the last day to attend the Comal County Fair and Rodeo. It's described as the largest county fair in Central Texas. It's located at 701 East Common Street, New Braunfels. Grounds will be open until 10 tonight, and they are open right now. Today, those attending are encouraged to bring a non-perishable food donation for the food bank. Ages 6 and under can get in free, and tickets for ages 12 and up are $10. It is now 8.07 and 74 degrees. All right, good news. If you want to catch a cheap movie this week still to come, where you can see one for just $1. Ciclovia has taken over the streets of downtown and coming up on GMSA, organizers are going to tell us what's new and what to know before you go. And if you're headed downtown, you might want to check our website. Make sure you know where you can get to and where you can't get to. And Ciclovia starts here in a little bit. Camilla will have more on that as we take a look at live cam. Ooh, well, changes are on the way. Cold front, as they say, but it's not going to be really cold. However, the air will feel different. And the Guayavera is a popular shirt worn by men all throughout the warm climates of Latin America. Its origins, well, they're the subject of a debate from having evolved from the uniforms of Spanish and Cuban soldiers to a man asking his wife to sew four pockets to the front of his shirt to hold his cigars and other belongings. Several countries also lay claim to the Guayavera from Cuba to the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, even as far away as the Philippines. The distinctive look of the shirt has basically remained the same, four front pockets and pleats, also referred to as alforces. Running down the front and the back of the shirt, the Mexican Guayaveras add beautiful embroidery to highlight those pleats. Production of the Guayavera dwindled in Cuba after the revolution, and manufacturing moved to Merida, Mexico, with its heyday occurring in the 1970s. Today, Guayaveras are enjoying a renaissance, with shirts being made of different styles of fabrics and creations. They're also even being made for women. The Guayavera remains an icon of Hispanic culture and style, and is worn by people of all backgrounds. Welcome back. It is 8-12. It is that time of year again. Time to tie up shoelaces, dust off your bike, go downtown and play in the street. And you don't have to worry about getting hit by a car because the streets are closed just for you. It is the 20th Sickle of Via. The free event includes local vendors and an opportunity to meet other people who love to be outside. One of my favorite events, our Camellia Juarez, is on the route with more. Camellia, have people started to set up? 
Well, right now we're just starting to see a couple water stations set up and the streets are expected to be closed starting at nine o'clock this morning. But if you're on your bike, there's already plenty of room to roam around. Now here with me to talk more about what we should know before we go is YMCA of Greater San Antonio, San Antonio organizer, Veronica Wong Rizzo. So first, can you tell us what's gonna be new this, new this year? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the route is brand new, 20th event downtown. We're activating three different areas, Crockett Park, Madison, and Maverick, but COVID vaccines, flu vaccines, back to school vaccines are really a hit, three-day guest passes, photo op opportunities, and Lipton will be out here giving away a beach cruiser, so uh, feel free to come on out and activate with all our vendors. That is a lot of new stuff happening this year. So tell us what people should know before they go. Yeah, so you definitely want to plan ahead. Uh, you want to make sure that you pack a water bottle. We'll have plenty of water stations along the route. Sunglasses, hat, sunscreen, and make sure your little ones all have a helmet so that you're practicing a good safety. No, we, we love good safety. And another thing is this year, the theme is mental health for mind, spirit, and body. So tell me, what is why is coming out here good for your mental health? So first of all, the YMCA has been founded on the spirit, mind, and body. And so being that we're all coming off of this uh, pre-COVID, post-COVID pandemic, uh, just being out and socializing and activating your body and participating in physical activity is good for your mental health. But most importantly, being out and about and uh, being around with friends and family and getting to know your community is super important. That is super important. So we'll be out here all morning to activate our bodies and hopefully later on you'll see me roller skating because that is how I feel good, feel good. So I'll throw it right back to you, David and Sarah. Oh, I can't wait your, for the roller skating part. Do you have part. your skates on now, Camelia? No, I was scared to do it while we were doing the interview, oh. but I'm about to go stretch first and yes, then, please. you know, warm up and then go on air with that. Please. Safety Careful. first. Thank you. That's going to be fun to, to watch her earlier. I wonder if she has a key to her skates. I've got a, a key? Brand new pair, oh. pair of roller, yeah. roller skates. You got a brand new key? I've got a brand new pair. That's it. See? You, this is before my time. Sorry, guys. Just I had mentioned say once it. again, Mike and I are here to teach the young people some history of music. So in the newsroom, in between shows, I was asking Camille about that. I go, are you going to sing the song I got a parent? She goes, I don't know that song. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm there with I don't so. know. But, you know, she was just she was bragging to me how good she can skate. We're going to find but, out. Be careful, please. Live TV, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Murphy's Law will prevail, so smart move on her part, not putting those skates on for a live interview. Anyway, uh, this morning it is uh, fairly nice. You saw uh, it looks fairly pleasant out there. Camille, over there it's uh, Ciglavia, 76 degrees right now. Dew point stands at 71, and a yeah, fair amount of humidity out there. Not uh, not the kind that sort of you know slaps you in the face like a wet towel. 94 for high temperature today, so we are going to be 6, uh, close to 7 degrees above normal. The aquifer went up a tenth of a foot and the allergens this is yesterday's kind of haven't gotten the updated count yet but everything is on the low side mold especially because you don't have any moisture out there or hardly at all okay equal time to the little kitty and this is a gorgeous little kitty cat look at that one and the caption if you can read it says sadie is waiting for feel like fall here in San Antonio. It will feel more like fall come tomorrow throughout the day. Not necessarily blast of cold air. You'll still be comfortable on that, that uh, pillow right there. Make sure you uh, download or scan that uh, QR code there and that will help you uh, download some pictures for KSAT Connect of your pet or of maybe beautiful, uh, beautiful weather like this. Lots of sunshine out there. A couple of clouds are hanging around. And throughout the day, we'll have uh, a lot of sunshine this morning, especially. Temperatures will make it through the upper 80s. We're going to be up to 88 degrees at noon and then continue up from there in through the 90s. Like I said, about uh, six, seven degrees above normal with 20% chance for a stray shower or two. And that may be kind of a generous percentage on there. One or two of those are going to be popping up later on today, sort of like what we had around here yesterday and that'll be the case into dinner time early evening now this computer model also wants to as the front starts working its way through here and this is one of the only ones that has 
a, a decent chance for a couple of stray showers in portions of the hill country, maybe a thunderstorm as that front moves on through and that would be tomorrow morning right around commute time and then those will be dying down as that drier air comes on in here throughout the, the course of the day. So here's what's going to be going on with the wind flow. We got the southeasterly flow around here. Humidity will drop down somewhat later on today, come back up and then tomorrow morning after that front moves on through that drier air continues to push on in here and that's going to make for some beautiful, beautiful weather for the rest of the week. All right, here is Tropical Storm Ian and again it is forecast to become a hurricane and then really start to strengthen in this bath water out here in the Western Caribbean up to a category three storm as it uh, reaches the tip of Cuba and then move into the Gulf of Mexico as a category four. Now with this forecast from the Hurricane Center, it will weaken slightly, but still a major storm at a category three. And then it's aiming for somewhere between Tampa and basically Panama City. Whether it stays at a category three or continues to weaken a little bit, that's still a, kind of a wait to be seen type situation. So forecast for us, we are going to be up to 88 at noon, partly cloudy skies. Humidity will begin to drop somewhat, but still enough humidity around there, sort of like yesterday with a couple of showers. I mean, just one or two of them. Count them on one hand, basically. And then tomorrow morning, there's that chance for a stray shower in the hill country as the front pushes on through. And winds will shift around to the north, north to northeast. Dry air is going to start to filter in. The speed of the dry air coming on in here is still a little bit iffy as of right now, but throughout the course of the day, humidity will drop down significantly. Low 60s, but then low 90s. So low temperatures below normal, high temperatures slightly above normal. Okay. Got it. 1971, it was released. It was called I've Got a Key. Melanie was a singer, songwriter. She did a lot of folk music. And I believe it went to number one. I remember it. There you go. David was busy Googling during the weather <laughs> forecast. <laughs> find out. I knew the song. I just didn't know who did it. But So Al, she had a really high voice. I'll forgive you for not paying attention to the weather if you looked up. Now, can we sing a song? No, I'm not singing that song. Please guess, don't. It's like really, really high. Like, I what? got a break. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Mike can sing it for us. 8, 8, 20, 75 degrees. Go ahead, Mike. I can also do Frankie Valley too. So. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. All right. That's, that's another time, Mike. All right. What about Com the Four Seasons? Did they back you up? <laughs> okay. Uh, comic sorry, book fans are celebrating National <laughs> Comic Book Day. Just ahead, how it all got started. Let's check out some lottery numbers as we had to break. Pick three. Three, three, three. And the, what is that, Fireball is four. The Daily Four is 6397. Fireball is four. Oh, Cash Five, 13. I was thinking about Frankie Valley now. <laughs> cash Five, 13, 17, 20, 21, <laughs> 27. Oh my God. What am I dealing with this morning? <laughs> Texas Lotto, 317, 18, 19, 40, 49. And let's look at the Powerball. 3921, 24, 29. Powerball 14. Power Play 2. Late December, back in 63. Yep. Oh, what a night. <sighs> All right. Here's some good news for those movie lovers out there. Santicos is bringing back their fall movie series, and each movie will only be $1. Santicos Theaters will be showing two $1 movies starting this week through November 3rd. So the first two movies of their fall movie series is Casper and Beetlejuice. The list of movies they will be showing are some fun Halloween movies. Other showings will be part of Monster House and The Core Bride. Is that Core or Corpse? Corpse. This Corpse is Corpse Bride. Bride yeah. I never heard that one. Yeah. Did you see that one? Uh, it, 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 I, parts of it. We'll go with a no. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see a full list of the movies, you can visit our website at ksat.com. Hey, comic book fans, unite! Today is National Comic Book Day, and it's a time to celebrate a genre that dates back into the 19th century. Yeah, so starting in the 1930s with the publication of the famous funnies in the U.S., considered by many to be the first real comic book. Then the arrival of Superman that sparked the so-called Golden Age of Comics, soon followed by Batman, Captain America, the Flash, and many others. And now many heroes that began on the pages of comic books. Of course, they've made the jump to the mega popular movie and TV screen adaption. What still amazes me today is how much comic books are worth if they're still in pristine condition. Yeah. They're, and they're, there's like a big market for it. It, it is a whole nother world yeah. going through it the is value amazing. of those.
826, 75 degrees. Oh no, we have a lot heading your way in the next half hour, including the latest on shortages. This one involving one of your favorite adult beverages. Plus, time for ticking for the upcoming midterm election. Time is ticking for the upcoming midterm election. Just ahead, how one local group is helping people register to vote. And welcome back. It is 8.30. We are ready for the 20th annual Ciclovia event to take place. It's got a new route this year for bikers and walkers. Streets have been blocked off already along three downtown parks. Camelia Wattis is live at Madison Square Park where vendors are setting up. So Camelia, oh, you are, you got your skates on. Yes. Look at me go. Look at all this space I have. So um, as you can see, the roads are already blocked off and they're going to be, I'm not skating as much as I want because there are a couple cars here. So be careful, like still be mindful, but this is how we be active. Like these are the things, whoa, <laughs> these are the things that we do to be active, to activate our body. And I can't wait for more people to come out right there is the police. They're getting ready behind us over there are the water vendors. Um, so there's gonna be lots of fun things to do, but like I said, there's still cars coming through. So I'm trying to be mindful of that and I'm moving around a lot, but it feels good. And I can't wait to see more people out. There's more, there's gonna be more people out here over here. There's some water stations. So be sure if you come out here to stay hydrated. These cars were not here earlier. So I'm gonna toss it back to y'all because there's too many cars out here. Yeah, David, be, Sarah? be careful out there, Camelia. Um, <laughs> she looks like she knows what she's yeah. doing on those skates. Great job, great job on yeah. the skates, but wow. I hope they close down those streets soon for Ciclovia. Now there's no more cars. There you okay. go. Okay, please be safe. She was like doing backwards and spinning. I know. On the eight wheels. Okay. That's pretty good. Here's my thing. Okay. Wear a helmet. <laughs> I don't care wear if you don't feel cool, always she, wear a helmet. She, you are worried about her, aren't you? I'm about everyone. She looked like she knew what she was doing. I know, so. but the cars are still out there. Okay. <laughs> Once again, it is now 832. So there's a little uh, idea of what you can be doing out at Ciclovia if you want to get up and go down there and enjoy a lot of friends and family and neighbors down there just getting out and enjoying it. What a beautiful day. I love well. Ciclovia. And yeah. Mike, I hope that it's not too hot and humid for those that are heading out this morning. I mean, it's, uh, this morning, obviously a little bit better. This, this afternoon, it's still going to be up in the uh, mid 90s. We'll still have some humidity hanging around here. And hats off to uh, Camellia because how many times have you tried to, you know, do something slightly athletic and talk on TV at the same time? It's not you, easy. You get kind of gassed out. So she, yeah. Nice and nice skating too. Anyway, right now we are at uh, 76 degrees and these numbers are up. Uh, I mean, think back to last week. We were down in the upper 60s here in town and even low 60s and upper 50s in parts of the hill country. The dew point, that top number there is up to 71. So enough humidity to where you notice it and you do a lot of skating. You are going to be sweating later on today. There's some of those numbers out there. Comfort at 67 degrees. 75 Castorville, 79 right now in Devine. That's definitely hot. And the humidity, it's present. It's not slapping in the face, but again, you're riding your bike roller skating a little too much and you'll definitely uh, notice it. Uh, mold, ragweed, pigweed are all on the low side and uh, partly cloudy. Again, pleasant morning. I mean, it is going to be on the kind of the warm side, mid 90s out there. A shower or two. Heading down to Ciclovia, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Uh, just a handful of showers here and there like what we had yesterday. Now, tomorrow, the front's going to move through in the morning. Right about this time or a little bit earlier here in town, wind's going to shift around out of the northeast. That is going to pull down drier air throughout the course of the day. It is going to be breezy. It's going to be much more comfortable in the afternoon. And then rest of the week with that dry air in place, nice cool mornings back down into the low 60s. We haven't seen that here in town in a long time. Time. Sunny, but very warm afternoons. We're still going to be up in the low 90s. So low temperatures on the cool side of things, high temperatures on the hot side of things. Any rain to be squeezed out. Take a look at that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Mike. Look at ahead. We're just 44 days away from Election Day and organizations everywhere are pushing people to get registered to vote. The deadline for registration is October 11th. So one of those groups is the NAACP San Antonio branch. They lead a multi-organizational effort to sign up new voters on Saturdays. The political action chair tells us they're putting an emphasis on getting more women registered. 
thing, we want to register people to vote. We want to educate voters, and more than anything, we want to get people to the, people to the poll. So far, we are seeing more female first-time voters. Now, according to records from the Bear County Elections Department, from March 1st to September 23rd, and right now there's over 48,000 newly registered voters, including more than 24,000 of them are women. So 13,000 newly registered voters are between the ages of 18 and 20 years old. Once again, the deadline to register to vote for the 2022 Texas midterms is October 11th. And here at KSAT, we want to hear from anyone. If you are a first time voter, let us know on KSAT.com. There you can tell us about your experiences and what you're looking forward to. Just look for the story on our homepage. EPA announced Saturday that is, it is creating a new Office of Environmental Justice. So the new initiative by the Environmental Protection Agency is intended to address disparities in air and water quality in low-income areas. The new office will oversee the $3 billion climate and environmental justice program created by the Inflation Reduction Act. The landmark bill marks the largest government program to address climate change in U.S. history. First, there was a shortage of toilet paper, then computer chips, followed by baby formula, and now possibly beer. A shortage of aluminum cans and carbon dioxide could be the next supply chain issue to vex American consumers. Brewers also pointing to rising prices of malted barley and hops, as well as transportation that impact their bottom line. Industry experts say the variety and selection of beers could soon become more limited. The automotive company brand Ford is unable to make deliveries of some of its best-selling vehicles, so the shortage of computer chips is one reason, but another supply chain problem, a little unexpected. So the automaker does not have enough of the blue oval Ford brand badges that go on the front of those vehicles. You're looking at that famous sign that's right there on your screen. So Ford has delayed deliveries of a number of vehicles because they are waiting for that blue oval badge to go on them. Supply chain issues like this one may account for some of the reasons why Ford stock is down by 41% in 2022. Now to a dangerous trend at schools across the country in the last two weeks. More than a dozen states reporting hoax calls to 911 about school shooters. The FBI now getting involved. ABC's Philip LeBuff has more. This morning, a troubling and terrifying trend across the country. Fake calls to police about active shooters in schools. How the hell can you do this to kids? Like what goes through your head that you target children? It's called swatting because emergency responders, SWAT and tactical teams rush to the schools ready to engage, but there's no threat. Friday, the latest example, schools across Ohio in seven cities getting the hoax calls. Students huddled under desks, parents waiting outside in agony. According to the National Association of School Resource Officers, in addition to Ohio, these 15 states have been targeted since September 13th. That emotional cost of that those 20 minutes when we thought there was really an active shooter. And so you have all that chaos and anxiety and fear on the part of, of students, teachers, parents, the community members. In Texas, Houston's police chief with a warning last week after this response to a fake call at a high school there. It's no joke. Whoever made this call, just be, understand. When I say all our agencies, including the FBI, we're going to trace it down and we're going to hold them accountable, okay? The Bureau telling ABC News the FBI takes swatting very seriously because it puts innocent people at risk. Going on to say the agency will investigate every threat. And that was Phil Lipoff reporting. It is now 838 and 70, is that 76? 76 degrees. Wow, already. All right, one local woman turning her story of loss into a message of hope after the break, how she is using flowers to share healing. That's live with Live Cab. Once again, Ciclavia going on downtown this morning and into the early afternoon, about two o'clock. So grab your bike, your boots. Hey, if you can roller skate, go down there and roller skate with Camelia. She would love to. Don't it. forget your helmet. Oh, you're like a mother hen, always <laughs> making sure people are safe. Healing through floral arrangements. It is how a San Antonio florist has been able to find peace after losing her five-month-old son back in 2015. I spoke with Jessica Craven, who recently opened her own flower shop called Craven's Touch, about her journey on healing and helping others. 
If you don't have no hope, you have no peace. You simply, you just die in your grief. It was a dark place that Jessica Craven realized she didn't want to be in anymore after her son Benjamin died in 2015 when he was just five months old. His unexpected death left Jessica hopeless until she realized she wanted to help other families who were also grieving the loss of their children. Jessica and her husband started the nonprofit Benjamin's Right Hand. They would show up to funerals to be there for families, hold memorial services, and eventually were funded by Kim Rapier's foundation to donate burial plots. I would show up to the funeral, hand them pins, keepsake gifts, and I real noticed that a lot of families that were in need didn't have money for flowers. She met a florist named Josie Soto, who helped their nonprofit with funeral floral arrangements. Josie teaching Jessica during that time how to make arrangements. As soon as she started teaching me, I wanted to know more and I found joy in it. I found peace. It was like um, like meditation for me or just very peaceful. Jessica realized she had not only found her passion, but healing as well, which led her to opening a flower and gift shop Craven's Touch this year. Watching mothers bury their children over and over and over again. I've helped over 500 children. So I needed, it was time for me to find something that, you know, brought me joy, peace, love, hope. Taking her skills from Craven's Touch, she made and donated 21 angel wings to the Uvalde victim families through Benjamin's right hand. She wants other grieving families to know not to give up and that it is possible to find a way to heal like she did through flowers. The pain never goes away, but you learn to smile again. You learn to laugh again. You learn to move forward for the people that you love here. You also learn to have hope. And that nonprofit, Benjamin's Right Hand, uh, they hope to be able to continue their mission and goal and provide burial plots and services uh, for other grieving parents. Let's check over with Mike Osterhage. Okay, a lot of questions are what it's going to be like for Ciclovia this afternoon, and then more questions on when's fall start. Yeah, come well, on. Like when fall officially started. Yeah, okay. Yeah, last but Thursday. Like, when does uh -huh. it like? When's it get here? Yeah. In yeah. Other words. Well, we'll have a first little taste of it tomorrow morning. With that front Ooh, moving on okay. through, it is going to pull in some drier air, not necessarily that big, you know, blast of cold air that we're always looking for, but at least this is going to then allow low temperatures in the mornings throughout all, most all of next week, except for tomorrow morning, to be uh, nice and cool out there, but still going to be on the warm side in the afternoon. With low humidity, though, it'll be more comfortable than it will be today. Today's going to be a lot like yesterday with enough leftover humidity, where if you are riding your bike around and some sunshine, yeah, it's going to be a little bit on the warm side. That sum it up and a shower or two, but I wouldn't really worry about any sort of showers. We're at 76 right now. As you can see, got plenty of sunshine out there and uh, dew point stands at 71. So eh, there's enough moisture, enough uh, humidity and 94 for a high temperature later on today. The aquifer did go up one tenth of a foot in today's reading and the allergens still haven't gotten an updated count, but I would uh, venture, I guess, it's going to be pretty close to this mold, pigweed, ragweed, everything on the uh, low side. All right. You know, best way to cool off with that. No. There you go. Yes, with something. If you're not wearing it, you're not eating it right, right? It's not <laughs> all over your face. I love that picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. You want to download some shots, just scan that QR code, and that will uh, make it really easy to add some pictures of your pup, your kitty, or maybe a beautiful uh, sunrise shot, something. And yeah, a lot of sunshine out there right now. We'll see a couple more clouds hanging around here later on this afternoon. Temperatures will continue to go up in through the mid and upper 80s. Already, we're going to be at 88 degrees today at noon. That's the normal high temperature. And then we top off, like I said, at 94. That 20% chance for a couple of showers here or there in toward late afternoon dinner time like we had yesterday. Most of us aren't going to see anything as far as any rain. Then drop back down, finally backed into the upper 80s by 8 o'clock tonight. And computer model again has one or two of those little showers popping up out there later on this afternoon. Not a big deal. This one has the majority of them in portions of the uh, hill country, and that'll be about it. Now, there's also going to be a small chance of rain as we go into the overnight hours as the front starts to push its way on through here. And this particular model keeps things primarily in portions of the hill country. A couple of showers. 
perhaps even a thunderstorm. And then those will die down quickly as that drier air moves on in here in the morning hours. So just watch out for one or two of those. We'll have some clouds hanging around here and then those will continue to clear out. Dry air will continue to filter in throughout the course of the day. Kind of breezy conditions and it's going to be really, really nice. Very noticeable and then especially like I said, when you wake up Tuesday morning and the rest of the week, it'll be really actually light jacket sweatshirt for the kids. Uh, think about that for Tuesday through the rest of the week. So later on this afternoon, I don't think we dropped down that much. I think this this particular model kind of overdoes things. We'll stay in the low 60s for dew point temperatures. Then as the front moves on through here, it's tomorrow. Look at how these dew points then drop off down into the 40s and 30s. Uh, dry air that we haven't seen around here in a long, long time. All right, here's the latest on Ian. There it is in the Caribbean tropical storm right now. It will gain strength very quickly moving through the Western Caribbean. And then by Tuesday morning early, it's going to be a category three storm as it moves across the tip of Cuba and then moving into the Gulf of Mexico. And then by Wednesday, actually a category four storm. So really gaining a lot of strength strength, hopefully weakening somewhat more before it makes landfall. So it'll drop down to category three, but it is going to be making land sometime late next week. It looks like mid to latter portion of next week over there in the panhandle to the northwest coast of Florida, somewhere between Panama City and Tampa. 88 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon today. Still enough humidity to where you're going to notice that 94, and that's good six, almost seven degrees above normal. A stray shower or two. I wouldn't worry about rain today. However, a couple of showers are going to be possible tomorrow as that front moves through, especially in the uh, hill country. And you'll notice the wind will shift around to the northeast. Dry air will come on through. It's not going to be instantaneous when the front moves through, but throughout the day, drier air and beautiful cool mornings. We'll just leave it at that. Cool mornings next week. Okay, so for sure tomorrow morning, coffee on the porch. What ha happened? Tomorrow? Well, tomorrow morning early, it's still going to be somewhat humid as the front's moving through. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Okay. Yes. That's my coffee on the porch day. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Don't forget. 850, 77 degrees. All right. We'll be right back. Dave. Good morning. We're here at Madison Square Park, which is the middle. We're at Madison Square Park, which is in the middle of Ciclavia, and I want to give you all a look about how it looks right now. Vendors are just now starting to set up. We have Bird. We have Texas Organ Alliance. And we have some water stations, so if you forget your water, that's over there. And then also Lipton Tea and UT Health. So be sure, it starts at 10 o'clock, roads are already shut down, and it'll be going on until 2 today. So get on out, be active, do your girly little thing. And for now, I'll send it back to you, David Sarah. Hats off to the photog out there trying to track her down as she's skating all over the place. So keep her in the shot there. 94. Uh, it's going to be warm and kind of humid for uh, Ciclavia today. A shower or two is possible. I wouldn't really count on that. But yeah, just uh, humid enough. Now, the front's going to move through tomorrow morning, and that's going to start to pull in. We'll see the wind shift around to the northeast. It will get drier throughout the course of the day. Humidity is going to go away. And Sarah's coffee on the porch will then commence on Tuesday morning down in the mid 60s, low 60s throughout the, uh, the rest of the week, but still warm afternoons. We're still going to be, you know, the lows are going to be on the, the cool side of normal. Highs are going to be about oh, three, four, maybe five degrees above normal. But again, low humidity, so it's going to be a lot more uh, comfortable out there. Thank you, Mike. I got my like, coffee scheduled. Like those um, hey, for those of you that are handing out to Ciclavia, there is a new route. It is happening on Main Street. Usually it takes place on Broadway mm -hmm. or the south side, but I know Broadway has a lot of this construction. So it's um, on Main Street near Ashby, near Alamo Colleges. We have all of the routes and the road closures you can expect. Just head to our website at ksat.com. And maybe you'll see Camelia out there and you can roller skate together. Because don't you like pair up and do the spinning thing and all that kind of fun? On, you put it on our own, though. You do that? You do that, David? In my dreams. Okay. <laughs> Don't you and your wife skate in pairs? Like oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. If you're heading out, also 40 don't years forget ago. to wear your helmet, please. <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's go. I'm hey, busy watching her. Mike, yeah. David, thank you so much you're for welcome. joining me this Enjoyed Sunday it. morning. It's thank been a pleasure. You. Thank you for putting up with us. <laughs> See you back Someone here tomorrow. Someone has to.